Thank you, Dr. Gesemba. I'd like to turn to my second guest, Mr. Eugene Park, who chairs a conservative political group called Self Reliance. I wonder how you react, Mr. Park, to these ideas about giving freely, giving for nothing. Well, Dr. Gesemba's research was very interesting, but there's a danger of making a false generalization here. Just because the Maasai practice giving freely doesn't mean that this system can be applied to other societies. In fact, you believe that there are dangers in the kind of generosity Dr. Kisemba has described? That's right. We believe that, as far as possible, people should provide for themselves rather than depending on other people. If you just give people things freely without conditions, whether they work or not, whether they succeed or whether they fail, Well, that encourages laziness. It encourages dependence. It sounds like heaven, but it doesn't work in the real world. Dr. Kisemba, I wonder how you respond to that. Well, my research question was why do humans have an instinct for generosity? Mr. Park's question is how should we organize society for the best? These are two different questions. The problem is, some people are going to think. If humans have an instinct for generosity, then governments ought to be generous too. Dr. Gisemba rightly sees that these issues are separate, but some people are going to make the jump, mistakenly, from her question to mine. But some people might say, why not connect these questions? If humans have an instinct to help one another, and if, as Dr. Gisemba has shown, societies that give freely are more likely to prosper, Then why shouldn't governments be generous too? Well, modern urban societies are organized very differently from Maasai society. If wealth is mainly in cattle, everyone can easily see whether a neighbor is truly in need or not. With us, wealth is often invisible, hidden in bank accounts, for example. So it's easy for people who aren't really in need to cheat the system. But systems of generosity can be found in other societies as well. Take Fiji, for example. In Fijian culture, wealth is easier to hide, yet they have a system which is very like the cord system. It's called kere kere, which means to request. In one experiment, 50 Fijian men were simply given an amount of money equal to a day's wages. On average, they only kept 12% for themselves, and almost half gave all the money away. Of course, it's fine for people to give money away if they choose to. In fact, we think that the government should encourage donations to charities, churches, and so on. But if you just hand out money to anybody who asks, you reward the undeserving as well as the deserving. But if you analyze the kere kere system, you find that the people who receive the most money from their friends are those who themselves have a good reputation for giving. So it seems that systems of generosity actually encourage honest behavior, rather than inviting people to cheat the system. Well, another important difference is that Dr. Gesemba's research is based on small communities where people know each other. Maybe generosity works under these circumstances, but this is very different from a large government system that forces people to pay taxes to help others they've never met, the so called safety net. We think that this should provide only a basic minimum and no more. I think there are good reasons to make the safety net as generous as we can afford. Firstly, we value fairness. Life can be very unfair, and we want to correct that if we can. Second, we want to live in a civilized society, and it's not civilized for large numbers of people to live below the poverty line. Of course, I'm not arguing that governments should let people who are genuinely in need starve to death. But it can't be right either for the government to force hardworking taxpayers to support people who could support themselves. Well, I suppose politics has always been about finding a balance between competing philosophies. There we must end, but let me thank you both.